University Society. Uh, our name is actually Tribe, and Ooh. so this is Alex, and this is Amy, and uh, Gabriel. And we're just going to go over um, like why we started the project of um, starting this uh, Tribe project and um, what it has become now. So um, the the first the initial reason why we started it was because we didn't want to just be passive recipient of information, just putting that information back onto. <coughs> onto um, essays and onto um, exams and so we wanted to learn in an active way and, and kind of get all of the stuff that we were uh, learning and that was kind of bubbling inside us outside and share it with other other people uh, doing the same course as us which I think is kind of an obvious reason to start a, a student uh, group um, and then also the like the, the important thing when we started was that we didn't want it to be a society with like a president and blah 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 and all this hierarchy and organization. We wanted it to be more like Tribe Tours was a platform where whoever had a project that they wanted to start would be able to use that platform to gather enthusiasm from other um, students with like-minded um, intentions. Um, so the the first thing that we one of the first things that we did was we. Um, we started this website called The Cooler Ring. So the reason why we called it The Cooler Ring was because um, we kind of wanted to look at knowledge in a kind of, so is it not something that you should keep to yourself, but something that should be passed around in the, in the same way as the Cooler Ring in the, in the Trobe and at Islands, and that through this passing around of it, um, you kind of gain, the, the knowledge gains more, um, more on, its, on its way around. Um, so the, what, well, um, well, that website had to be kind of redone many times, and um, but this is its actual form. Um, but the so what what we started doing with it was trying to put our essays and make try to get students to feedback on each other's essays through that, and also try to make um, because what we find is that lecturers tend to ask exactly the same essay questions every year. And we felt that if we start putting our essays onto there, then then students not not as in a like copying way or whatever, but then students would start looking at older essays and try to build up on them so that there's a kind of building up going rather than just the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, you know that sharing knowledge isn't cheating. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and, and in addition to the cooler room, we started doing some study groups. And so we got together outside of the lecture theatre, away from the lecture, just to kind of see what um, was going on in each other's minds. Um, because, you, you know, in a classic lecture theatre setting, you sit there, you kind of ponder it in your own mind, and then you write it in an essay, and that essay gets filed, and it's all done. Um, so instead of being kind of spoon-fed things, we got together and, and discussed these topics, because, you know, we know that anthropology does go further than the three-pronged approach, you know, especially in this university, we've got the BSc in social and medical anthropology. So that was kind of a way for all of these students to get together and, you know, some get the social perspective and get the medical perspective as well. Um, and, yeah, it was just a nice little way to just talk to each other about things we were stuck on um, and kind of put each other at ease and it's very social as well and it tied in really well with the cougaring as well, so... Um, so one of the first things that we started, well, Glenn Bowman um, talked about it quite a bit in his uh, introduction this morning. But so as you all have probably understood, our school is not just School of Anthropology, but it's School of Anthropology and Conservation. So what, well, we have quite a lot of friends as anthropologists who are conservationists. There's actually quite a few conservationists in, in, this, in this room today. Um, and, we, um, and we, so we decided to start talks to, because what we realised was that there was a kind of elephant, not in the room, but in the department, between anthropology and conservation, that although they, um, they're, they're together, they don't collaborate. And then often people will go on afterwards doing anthropology jobs or conservation jobs and carry on with that kind of non-collaboration. And so we thought it'd be good idea to start um, talking about that now. And what we realised that when we started touching to that point, the whole, as Ben Bowman was saying, well, what we didn't know at the time was that initially people didn't want to share this department. Um, yeah. Yeah, and these series of talks looked into the conflict between aims of conservation and anthropology. And as a school, like already combined within one building, we had the opportunity to bring the disciplines together. This um, was obviously, as Glenn Bowman said again, um, supported by a collaboration between Conservation Society and Tribe, and with loads of backup from the staff themselves. Uh, the, there was obviously talks, there were speaker panels, interactive exercises, group learning, 
and all this dissolved the separations between us. It just made the disciplines more accessible to both sides of, of anthropology and conservation. Um, one of the first things we did was we had two talks from two conservationists that had recent um, field experiences, and they had two different perspectives with um, confrontations with local populations in their conservation work. That was from Trisha and Simle and Jaime oh, yeah. <laughs> um, And these sort of... Trisha Simle, The... lost my train of thought. It's alright. Anthology... And these showed us that anthology and conservation come together to solve the conflicts that we have within both of our disciplines. And um, so the discussions move forward to focus towards the application of these ideas. And this inspired me personally, really, to think about applied anthropology, and especially within its use in conservation. And since then, presentations and talks in anthropology and conservation that we've had over the last couple of months have involved strong debate and much more flexibility and perspective <coughs> from, both, from both of us. And these included the Indian Wolf by Trishan Simle, right here again, and um, a couple of films that we've seen. <coughs> and one of the main things that was brought forward also is that <coughs> we found that we both talking past each other. I mean, especially in anthropology, it was hard to communicate between disciplines for us. And that was an interesting thing that I think will be touched upon and has been touched upon already here today. So what came out of the elephant and not the tree? <laughs> um, Triburn has allowed us to create links between departments of the university and between societies as well. There's a lot of um, collaboration between societies. And today we've got the psychedelics here, uh, especially Conslock as well. Um, and also those outside of the anthropological community, which kind of is the whole point of, of what we're trying to get at today, breaking bubbles and making anthropology more accessible to, to everyone. Um, but most importantly, Tribe's initial aim was to unite those within the department, so obviously anthropology and conservation. And more importantly than that, undergraduates, postgraduates and lecturers, because undergraduates aren't heard as much, you know, you, and you hear about what postgraduates are doing, you hear about what lecturers are doing. I mean, even though we haven't done anything yet, it's kind of like a, you know, we, we still want to be heard, we still want to get involved and, and create relationships between postgrads and the lecturers. And so one of the things that we've um, done to try and to get this relationship going is we've organised a school trip to Sheppey, which is going on next weekend. It's just a chance for lecturers and students to get together and have a, a social day out, a nice walk in Sheppey, and then a pub quiz. Um, we also organised a fundraising event um, called Indigenous, and we put a night on, on our nightclub on campus, and that was really, really successful. We had loads of people through it from all sorts of departments coming along and um, trying to get everybody involved in anthropology um, via music. Um, yeah, and basically, it, it's just trying to create links and get everyone involved. I mean, in Tribe, we have um, students from English literature coming along to, to the meetings and stuff, so it's really good. So the running theme of this, this the elephant in the department and trying to unite everyone, um, we wanted to literalise that, trying to make something physical. So we thought we'd make a, act, an actual elephant. And that's the one that you can see out in the foyer. Um, so there's conservation students, anthropology students, lecturers, all got involved to make the elephant. And it was just a, a visual point of discussion. So, you know, people within the department that aren't really involved in anthropology, in, in the societies and conservation, were like, well, what's the elephant about in Milo building? Like, and so you just talk, oh, that's because of blah, 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 and you know, everything that we've been talking about today. Um, you know, and even got the architecture students involved, you know, what's that there, it's in our way, get rid of it, and, uh, <laughs> and stuff. So it was just a really nice visual thing to make what we were thinking about and discussing literal. Um, yeah, so it just brought attention to us, really. <laughs> and I think one of the main themes that came back also when we were talking with conservationists was this kind of, like, um, education, and it, like, kind of comes back also in lots of other contexts, that 
So we decided to start like trying to, as a tribe group, look more into that education. Um, yeah. So the focus moved to the subject of education. And we had talks with our lecturers um, and being really critical of our own education, but in a, in a wider perspective, I'm just sort of, oh, I'm a uni, life's hard sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and so we saw a lot of films in this little talk as well that um, were critically reviewing and breaking down our so-called Western education that we live in today. And um, also one of the more prominent ones that we saw, especially in my mind, was a, a film uh, called The Tongan Art about alternative education in a university called Atanisi. And um, Futa here was the, um, the inspiration, the founder of Atanisi, I think, on some level. And um, he was incredibly interested in sort of bringing together the classics and tradition of Tonga. And um, with all this, we were trying to find an outlet for our inspiration and coming up with lots of models for the way we teach and our talk. So what Tribe has become? So it initially started off with <coughs> study groups and cooler in, just sharing information, trying to break down boundaries, just, you know, social within uh, people in lectures. Um, but it's kind of become a place where everyone can bring their anthropology. Anthropology is so diverse and so vast, actually, that everyone has their own version and are interested in lots of different areas. So it was a place where everyone can bring, you know, what is your anthropology? And, and it's a place, just a medium for undergraduates, in this case, just to be more heard and just to, to hear about each other and kind of break the boundaries and break, break the bubbles between the living and the learned. Um, and I think... Just to finish, um, so through this whole process that we've been through of um, like getting a team of people who are passionate about the same thing and then realizing that actually undergraduates, as long as they that they, they can be heard, and then also um, realizing the importance of education and of those boundaries and of trying to uh, break those boundaries. Well, breaking bubbles kind of really is um, what we we are we mainly being the organizers for breaking bubbles, and um, yeah, so we're glad that you're sharing this with us. Um, but it's ni it nicely goes on to the, the whole tribe process, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's it.